Hello, everyone. This is only my second year. I'm not nervous. So tonight, I would like to welcome you to our annual Great Futures Dinner, which is normally known as our Steak and Burger. Um, we have a treat for you tonight that is going to be phenomenal. And what I would like to do is welcome some little guests that are going to be big guests one day and come back and do phenomenal things. At this time, if you would help me to welcome you to their house, the Boys and Girls Club members of... Just one second, we have little ladies who need to take their seats. And if you will please give them a round of applause because they did a phenomenal job at our registration. Now, I want to welcome you all to their house. Butler, the parent of Michael Graham, one of the youth club members here at the Boys and Girls Club. I also serve as chair of the Thomasville City Schools Board of Education, and I would like to welcome you to the annual Marguerite Neal Williams Boys and Girls Club's Great Futures Dinner. We are so happy that you all could join us this evening to support the fantastic work that the Boys and Girls Club of Thomasville and Thomas County do for the youth in our community. The Great Futures Dinner, formerly known as the Steak and Burger Dinner, is one of the premier events organized by boys and girls clubs across the nation. This event not only helps to raise much needed operational funds, it also gives you the opportunity to fellowship with youth club members at your table. And this evening, you'll get to enjoy a few words from our speaker, Mr. Russell Turner, the CEO and sole owner of 1915 South, based right here in Thomasville, Georgia. So please relax and enjoy the evening. And once again, thank you for joining us. So as a parent, I just wanna share how the Boys and Girls Club here in Thomasville, Thomas County has impacted my son, Michael. Michael has been a club member for several years now, and when he first joined, he was so excited. There's a pool table here at the Boys and Girls Club. <laughs> he always wanted to make it here as soon as he could, so he didn't have to wait for his turn to play pool. Michael has grown so much, and I can see him building self-esteem. There are so many opportunities and different learning experiences here, academically, with homework support after school, Arts and Culture with Ms. Dixie Hedrington in the back with Friends of Stars, Inc. with the after school art classes. And also just learning new activities, playing golf with the Boys and Girls Golf Team. I've seen Michael grow and develop, make new friends, um, build relationships, and I know that he's continuing to develop into a great citizen here in Thomasville, Thomas County. So thank you all here at the Boys and Girls Club for helping my son become a great citizen and all you do for our children here. Thank you so much. At this time, we'll have club member Douglas Edwards 
as he takes the stage for the invocation. Let us pray. Lord, we come before you today, humble and grateful for all that you have done for us. We ask you, you would bless our time together as we seek to know you more. Thank you for being uh, to, for bringing us together today in the spirit. May you honor one another by keeping an open mind. May we voice our truth and listen to it in the heart. May the word of our mouth and meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Douglas. Next, we will have Jeremiah Smith with our grace. Everybody bow your head. Dear Lord, as we sit down to enjoy this meal together, we give thanks to you for this food and your many blessings in our life. We thank you for our family and ask you to continue to bless us together. In his name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jeremiah. Now we'll have Mr. Lee Wagner and Ms. Janet Lyles. Again, I want to welcome y'all tonight. I've had the pleasure this year of leading this group of board of directors for the Boys and Girls Club. And I'm going to tell you right now, by standing here and looking out and seeing all these wonderful faces, these children, I am just touched by each of you that are here tonight that have committed to take your time out to be with all of us. But more importantly, I want to thank each of the sponsors and we have some wonderful sponsors that you will see on your back cover. But I especially want to thank our presenting sponsors, Flowers Foods and Philip and Austin Watt. Thank you. Our wonderful legacy sponsor, Mike and Laura Shea. All of you and each of you, the Blue Door sponsors, the Be Great sponsors, and our partners. Please look at this, look around, and you will see these people that are representing the various businesses. And please take a moment to thank them. But at, from me, I say thank you. Thank you, Janet. Thank you to every one of you for being here. Give yourself a hand. It is so good to see you all. Thank you for being here, and thank you for what you do to support this great organization. Many of you, as I look, look around the room, many of you have been with us for pretty much the inception of this great event. I think we're celebrating the either 19th or 20th dinner uh, over our almost 25-year history. And again, some of you have been with us from the very beginning, and we certainly, certainly appreciate that. For those of you that uh, tonight might be your first time here or your first time sponsoring this event, thank you and we look forward to your being a part of this event moving forward for many, many years to come. So uh, again, we just cannot thank you enough. Um, as we will share with you throughout the night, um, we, we've all, we're celebrating, uh, we're in year number 24 in this community and so it's just hard to believe that 24 years have, have passed and just think over a 24 year period, just how many lives we have been able to reach and touch and impact. And so give yourselves a big hand for making that possible. At this time, I would like to introduce Mr. Desmond Diggs to give our Youth of the Year message. Good evening, I am Desmond Diggs, and it is my honor and pleasure to stand before you as your 2022-23 Youth of the Year runner up in absence of our Youth of the Year winner, Sophie Davis, who is now a freshman at, a freshman at Fort Valley State University. I would like to share my club experience with you. How would I describe my experience? Well, being a club member has been one of the best experiences in my life. <laughs> Fill your life with experience not things, have stories to tell, not stuff to show. The Boys and Girls Club has had a significant impact on my life. When I started the club, I was shy and innocent. <laughs> Once I walked through those doors, I only wanted to sit in the corner because I didn't feel, talking, I didn't feel comfortable talking to anyone. However, this one 
fantastic lady. Her name is Miss Scott Mara. She came up to me and she started talking to me every day until I conquered my fears. Now you can't get me to sit down because I'm always, I love to be seen and I'm always asking if anybody needs help or how their day is going. The great thing I love about the club is that every staff here has your back. In the club, there are a lot of challenges that they come up with to help us better ourselves. For example, in the summer, we have a Money Matters financial literacy class. They set up a reality shopping store. The shopping center allowed us to learn how to, how to spend our money wisely, budget, and not get cheated. I am most proud of myself for stepping up and becoming an active youth leadership, active leadership council member. This leadership council comprises a group of intu intuitive county community center and active teens advocates who are unafraid to go out the to go out into their community to learn and to teach other teens about teen pregnancy and prevention, AIDS, HIV, and awareness. Being a part of this youth, youth leadership council has built my confidence, character, and most of all, the ability to give with a genuine heart. So when you ask me about my club experience, I spent the best years of my life right here in this Boys and Girls Club. And it's a fantastic experience I will never forget because it helped mold me into the young man I am today. Thank you. Now we will have a lovely performance from Ms. Ariel Anderson and Kinley Harrison. everybody needs someone to stand by and we thank God that you all are standing by us and have been standing by us for over 24 years. At this time I would like to introduce this lovely lady by the name of Mrs. Austin Watt. She's going to come up and introduce her brother, her friend, Mr. Russell Turner. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, the girls were wonderful, and I, I, it, was so, it was so wonderful watching the girls dance, but was even more special as a mother was watching this mother watch her daughter dance. 
So I hope any of you kiddos saw that. That's how we look at you when you all are doing something special. Or it, just the love is so big and so in, in our hearts for you all. So we're all, we're, we are all people that stand by you and we're your backup singers. So remember that. Sometimes times are hard, but you always have backup singers, especially at the Boys and Girls Club. But I'm not up here to talk about the Boys and Girls Club. I'm up here to talk about my really good friend and a man I respect deeply, and that is Russell Turner. Russell's a very successful businessman. He's an owner of a very large company, and he's a very, very well-respected leader. But instead of telling you things that are on his resume, which are right there on the table, so you can read it if you'd like, I'd really like to um, share with you some things that I learned about Russell from his few family members, some friends and employees, really how Russell Turner inspires them. Tonight we're talking about, about this, this, this great, it's, it's be great, we used to be the expression, but now it's great futures. Russell invests in great futures every day. And so I want you to hear how he inspires others in their great futures. A first comment. When you look at the success of Russell's business, 1915 South, which has roots dating back over 100 years to a single family furniture hardware store in Pelham, many would assume that he is merely the latest turner to lead an established company. While it is true that three generations of his family created and sustained this company, Russell was in a leadership role when the furniture industry, when the furniture industry was threatened by the 2007 financial crisis. It was not an easy time. His response to this challenge was truly inspiring, according to this dear friend and colleague. Russell had the courage to make difficult decisions to change his business and adapt to the current realities of the industry. Russell's undeniable business sense tempered with his humility and his trust to enlist the talents of others. He wasn't just depending on himself, he was depending on others to meet the goals that have been the linchpin to the 1915, I mean, 1915 South success. Today, that single store that opened in 1915 in Pelham, Georgia, is now a furniture and real estate business with 28 Ashley stores in six states, three distribution centers, the most recent one opening right here in our hometown, or our home county, Thomas County, making sure that people in Thomas County can be employed. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Russell inspires by supporting and trusting his employees. A member of his leadership team shared, Russell fully believes in his team and equips us to be successful. He sets a vision and places full trust in his employee to execute that vision and plan. This creates very passionate employees and we treat this company like our own. It is our success also. He also expires, inspires by example. Just last week, Russell, the CEO and sole proprietor of 1915 South, was seen running the vacuum cleaner in the distribution center because it needed to be done and someone needed to do it. So kiddos, remember when your mom needs something done, it's a leader that gets it done in your house. It's not just a chore. Leaders show up and gets what needs to be done. Consistently, when speaking with folks, I learned that folks are inspired by Russell's loyalty and passion. Russell is a loyal to his friends, employees, and the organization he supports, one said. Russell gets equally excited by my success. He gets lit up when we are successful in our work and in our lives. It inspires me to work for harder and have 1915 South be successful. His daughter writes, I've never seen someone get more excited to help someone else and see them succeed as my dad. That's my dad. High praise because she's a teacher and she works every day to inspire young people to succeed. Russell is loyal. 
Russell can get his hair cut anywhere in the world, literally. But he still travels every three weeks to his hometown of Pelham, Georgia, to get his hair cut from the same barber who started cutting his hair when he was four years old. In case you're looking for any grooming tips, it's always high and tight. Russell's humble, quiet, and generous commitment to his community and others truly inspires his children. This is a legacy. One of his ch children told me, I love the way he's always supportive and wanting the best for me. He leads by example and guides me in a way I need. I don't always want it, but I know I need it. His drive and ambition are a force to be reckoned with. And he has gotten to, it has helped him get him where he is today. He always wants to help others achieve their dreams, which is really inspiring to me. I want to follow in his footsteps. Among many, the trait I admire most about dad is his never ending desire to give back to the community, the people, and the places that have helped him get to where he is today. In doing so, he keeps perspective of what truly matters most in life, supporting and loving those who have done the same for him and supporting and loving those he has never met, but who may do the same in the future. The thing I admire most about my dad is his, ha his passion for helping others. Since a young age, he has helped me to learn and grow. And as I have become older and in my own career, I have been able to see the impact that he has on others. It's tangible. Lives have been changed. Whether that be through mentoring, teaching, giving his time and energy or services, he is always willing to help others. And he gets jazzed when they are successful. It's clear that Russell's success is grounded in his passionate, inspire leading, inspiring leadership to provide great futures for his business, his family, his friends, and our community. We're grateful to have Ray, Russell, his family here in Thomasville. They could have chose anywhere and they chose us. We're grateful. So as I ask Russell to come up and speak, I hope you will take a moment to consider what your role is in inspiring great futures for yourself, for others, and for our community. And I'm sure that Tiffany will come up and give you a phone number if you're curious about how you can do that. But with that, Russell, please come up and let us know what you're going to share with us tonight. Thank you, Austin. I, <clears throat> they, so they, uh, they, they asked me who, um, you know, who should do the, the intro, and, and, and it was obvious it was Austin, you know, but man, she's thorough, isn't she? <clears throat> So anyway, also I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we've been great friends for a long time. Um, I've got my notes here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna reference a little bit. Um, so, um, so Lee asked me to do the talk and um, he actually sent me a letter and, and I just responded. I don't ever, if somebody asked me to give money and they send me a letter, I never do it. But I just did it. Lee asked me, and, and uh, I just said, yeah. I, called, I probably emailed you back, and I instantly said, yeah, I want to do it. Uh, yeah. So, um, but then we, um, we got Tiffany, and, and, and Lee asked me to come here. And I got to tell you, um, I was here with Lee. Um, I, it, was, it wasn't long after you opened. It, within the, 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 the three or four years after it opened. And I gotta tell you, this place looks the same. It is very well maintained. Um, there's a lot of emphasis put on it. And, and um, so if, when I look at their mission statement and it says, and I paraphrase a little bit, but it says enable all young people reach their full potential as productive, caring, and responsible citizens. If you have that, and then you maintain your facility and take care of all the people the way they do, I can I can get behind that all day. And so we're we're committed. Um, you know, 1915 is committed to, to being involved annually. With as long as this keeps going the way it is, and I know it will because it's coming and going in the 25th year. 
So we're going to do that. So um, we're going to do it. I, I can't stand this. I can't stand up and do this. So I got to walk around. So I did ask Tiffany. I said, hey, do you have a, uh, um, can I walk around with a microphone? She said, yeah, you can do it. So I'm going to do it. So, all right, enough about, no more business. So now I'm not going to look at any more adults in here. We're all talking to the kids. We're going to talk to you all because that's what it's all about. So um, I love the format of having all the kids at the table. I think it's the most ingenious thing, and I, and I love that y'all do that and have everybody here. So um, the, uh, um, I just referenced the mission statement. And, and, and so what I'm talking to y'all about, a mission, a mission statement is a short statement or description on why the organization exists. So sometimes, you know, we don't know what mission is, mission statement, whatever, but that's what it is. It's, why, it's a description. And so it is, and again, I paraphrase a little bit, it's to enable young people reach their full potential as productive, caring, and responsible citizens. <laughs> Sorry, I got some allergies. I can't, I've, I've been out of town. I came back to Thomasville, and allergies are, they're, they're still here. So, um, and I, and I just, I love that fact. I love the fact that those are the three things. So I can tell you that those three things, and they've had a lot to do with 1915 South. And it's, it, it just, when you, we have had to be productive or we can't stay in business. Um, we have to care. We've got 700 people that are working with us now. Um, we used to have Christmas parties at mom and dad's house, and uh, it was it was siblings, it was employees and siblings too. It was like, and they all fit in there. We can't and we we can't even fit them in here. So, um, but we have to care, and if we didn't, there'd be a lot of people that we just that, that they just walk away, and we and we have to care. Um, and then we have to be responsible. So the third one is responsible, and this is what drives us to do the right thing being responsible. So let's, let, me talk, let me talk to, the, to, to you all about those three. So productive, uh, that's the first one. Uh, what is productive? It is the definition is to produce a result. So how can you be productive? Um, these are the things that I, that I kind of listed. I think they are. Consistency is probably my, my number one. Um, what's an example of that? Wake up at the same time every day. Don't stay in the bed. Get up. Um, keep your room straight. You don't even want to hear all that, did you? <laughs> make your bed. Anybody make their bed every day? Make your bed. And brush your teeth. Uh, the next one is decision making. And uh, you all make them every day. And... and uh, I make them fast. That's my natural reaction is make a fast decision. Um, the opposite of that is taking time and analyzing it and really never making a decision. So there's got to be somewhere in the middle. Um, our exec team, which is our eight, there's eight leaders in our company, and we get together and we talk about things, um, and we meet every week for an hour and a half. And we don't make a decision within the company unless we all decide together and we get on the same page. And then we do it. So it's not me making it, it's everybody doing the whole thing. Next one in being pr pr productive is be prepared. So I'm gonna show you what I've got here. Uh, I've got this electronic deal, which Austin's gonna hold, but just in case it flaked out on me, what have I got? I've got it all written down right here. So you gotta be prepared. I've also got one more. I've got one on the table that I took pictures of today. I got I got all these notes. Uh, yeah, thank you. Got all these notes in my phone. So I, you have to be prepared. So whenever you do anything, you got to be ready ahead of time. Examples of that. What, what would y'all think? Examples. So um, are, are you prepared when you go to school? You have to be, don't you? You have to work and do it ahead. And this talk. Do you think I could just get up here and start talking? Yeah, I probably could, but it wouldn't make any sense. So I had to really think about it, and I had to go through and, 
and, and prepare for this. And like I said, I showed you that. How about sports too? You got to be prepared for sport. You got to practice. And so it's the same thing. You got to be prepared to be productive. So, and then in my business, um, has to do with the economy. So if I'm not prepared for whatever's coming at me, um, you know, Kevin wants me to make sure to pay him back. And so I have to, I can't have any excuses about the economy. It's not my fault. Kevin needs his money back. Did you learn that? So, um, and then time management or using your time wisely to be productive. Example of that. So uh, when I walk around with Lee and Tiffany in here, the, the time that you all have after school is the best time management I've ever seen. I think that's fantastic that you all come, you stay focused, and you probably get a ton of work done after, after school coming here. I think that's fantastic. There's always plenty of time um, until you waste it, and then there ain't enough. And so I've got uh, one daughter that was very sweet and quoted in there, but she, oh, I, know, I just don't have time. So she's not managing her time. And so, and she doesn't want to listen to her dad say it, but um, I do. I do wait until she finds things that she's doing and she shouldn't be doing, and I'll say, "Hey, you know, if you'd be ahead of time if you weren't doing that, and you do what you're supposed to do." So, the next one, um, which some of y'all have heard me talk about this, but um, having a mentor. So, what is a mentor? Um, it's a an experienced and trusted advisor. Um, so this kind of ties back to the making decisions for me, decision making. Um, I've got a handful of them, um, and I've added to them. So as, as, as we've grown, I've needed to talk to people. And so, I, and, 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 but what really keeps me grounded is I keep up with the first ones I've ever had, and that keeps me still grounded and going to my same barbershop and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, and, and actually, well, I, this is the second barber. Oh, yeah, the first one was in mom and dad's class, and he's, he's, he's old. But I've only had two barbers in my whole life, and I'm 56, so. Um, um, so, um, a mentor, when you talk to somebody and you have questions, they're not going to tell you how to do it. They're there to give you guidance and to talk to you. You got to make your decision on your own, but you need a mentor. You need people, um, and they can be all kind of things. We can always talk about that later. Um, uh, the second thing is caring. Uh, and so that is defined as displaying kindness and concern for others. Um, I've got a little pamphlet that I brought that I've, I think I may have had it in my pocket or whatever, but it's called Ashley Cares. And it shows the things that we do that we, we do, we care. And so, um, it's easy to think about yourself only. It's just natural. It's, 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 uh, you learn from watching other people and how they do things. They also learn from you. They're going to watch you. The little ones are watching the older ones in here all the time. And so um, they, uh, they're learning how you treat and care and protect others, good and bad. They're watching it. Uh, so in our workplace, I'll tell you how that works at, at work. So an example of that would be somebody struggling in our, in, our, in our store. And it could be family. It could be they just are not doing what they need to be doing. So do we work with them, ask them, help them, or do we just fire them? And that's, you know, and same thing for y'all at school and, and you all the kids. It, it might be people that are picking on somebody, you know? And so what do you do? Are you going to join in? easy thing to do, just pick on somebody, but do you stand up and do you become a leader and do you do the right thing and, and um, anybody can join in. A leader stands up and cares. Um, caring is also given your uh, time and talents. This is also learned. It's not natural. Give away time and talents, um, but it's important. So examples of that would be people that volunteer their time to help others. Y'all know that there's people around here that come in and help and volunteer, I'm sure, and help. Um, and then people that give money to help teach others and, and improve them. Those are examples of that. The third um, on your mission statement is responsible. So that is defined as having an obligation to do something or 
have control over or care for someone. So, you know, my view on how I try to conduct myself is I want people to be able to count on me, um, to support them, be on time, a friend and a leader. So, as I said, we've got 700 people right now. Um, and during tough times, that's when it, you get checked. And, you know, I had, a, you know, I got 700 people, I got 700 families that I'm responsible for. And, and, um, and so I had a guy tell me one time, um, and I will tell you, he got fired. So this is what happened. Um, not, not for me, but he was working. But he said, those people are not your responsibility. And I just couldn't disagree with him more. And, and he said, you got to do what's right for you. And I, it just was, but again, he's, he's not working where he was. And so I think, I think that took care of itself. Karma is interesting. So, and then consistency, this comes back into this one again. And so um, those, are the, those are the three. I'm going to wrap up with, a, with that again. But I'm going to do, which uh, I've done before, and these are just random comments. Philip and I talked about, he kind of knew I had it coming. We talked today, and uh, these are random things that didn't really fit in there, but I just want to say them. So they're kind of fun, unique. So the first one, I, we, we can't kind of have covered, but it, it's, it is have a daily routine. So, and it starts by making up your bed. Make up your bed in the morning. And then, you know what you've done? You've already succeeded one time. You already got a success in your block. If you get up and make up your bed, you can look back and say, boy, I'm, I'm ready. I've got, that's already one down. Um, this can also go with routine, but um, is do some type of sport, whether it be a team, whether it be just an activity or whatever, but do sports. Do It's best if you can do it with some people, and then you get to learn how to work with people and what's good, what's bad, how you deal with somebody that's a problem. I, it, that's that's kind of how you do it. Um, this is one that I was going to tell Philip. This is a Gary Mule Deer. Only brush and floss every day the teeth you want to keep. <laughs> if you don't want some of your teeth, just leave them alone. They're going to, they're going to take care of themselves. Uh, another uh, Henry Ford quote that I like. If you think you can do a thing or you think you can't do a thing, you're right. So it's, you make up your mind. And you decide, can I do it? Do I want to do it? And am I going to do it? Yeah, and you just decide. So the other one, this may not be popular for some of you all, but uh, put down your electronics and read. So read instead. Um, the other one, and some of these have been touched on a little bit, but it's, uh, see, there goes my, I touched the wrong screen. Look for things that need to be done and do them. Look ahead and do things that need to be done. Don't wait for somebody to ask you to do it. And that's, an example of that would be <laughs> a vacuum. Yeah, you do a vacuum. So the word, I, I heard somebody talk about um, a person of the day, and they would see something need to be done, and they would go find somebody to do it. That's the wrong way to do it. If it needs to be done, you just do it, and you set the example. So um, the, the example I did was you all help wash dishes. That's something you can do. Just go do it. Don't even let somebody ask you. Um, be on time. And what does that mean? That's five minutes early. That's not on time. So that could be going to school. That can be your job. That can be whatever. But but uh, but but be on time. Uh, don't complain. Do something to change what needs to be fixed. Don't complain about complain about doesn't get anything done. So and then the last one in this is get a mentor, which I said before. A trusted advisor. Take some time to do that. So in conclusion, I'm going to go back and I'm going to talk to you about those mission statement things real quick. So if you can say that you've been productive, and y'all go back and look on it. That's the mission statement here. Here, it, if, you, if you've been productive, caring, and responsible every day, every week, this year, and for your whole life, we would all be happy and much better for it. So thank you, everyone, for doing this. Thank you again. Can I have Mr. Cole, please?
And I would like to welcome to the stage a very special young lady, Miss Nevaeh Smith, please. We can't thank you enough for coming today, coming tonight. And um, Austin, I would have to say your little brother is very competitive. So, Russell for the win. Um, but we just wanna show a small token of our appreciation for you and our love for you and all that you do, not only for the Boys and Girls Club, but for everyone, your staff, your family, and every entity. Every time I see something, whatever organization, it's always you. And we wanna say thank you. Each year we'll do like a, a, a small video to kind of show what's going on within the club. And so this particular time we decided to showcase one of our own and show kind of like a day to day of what she does, kind of like home life after school, at the club and also at school. So Miss Nevaeh, we were gonna use Tamar because we were like, um, oh, Tamar is just gonna get there. She's gonna blah, 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 and it's gonna just be great. But Nevaeh kind of shocked us. She kind of blossomed out of her shell. And so, please join us by looking at the screen here. The biggest thing that the Boys and Girls Club gave me over my span of being a club kid was ambition to finish high school. Just being around the atmosphere, creating the vision that education is a key you're going to need it. If I didn't have it, I probably would have just went for a couple years and like, um, that's not for me. Typically, our kids are trying to figure out, okay, you know, maybe this is what I want to do, maybe this is not what I want to do, so we try to steer them in that area to let them know, okay, you know, if this is what you want to do, these are the steps that you may have to take. I want to be a teacher. I wanted to be a president, but I know, I think President, being a president is kind of hard, but being a teacher I think is good for me and I think it might be fun. We built plans before vision boards were big now. We had vision boards. They gave us hope to finish and finish with pride. I'm 10 and I'm in the fourth grade. I move up here with my sister and my auntie. I've been the art teacher here at Harper for 10 years, and it is my dream job. Would never change it. And I do remember when she first stepped foot in my classroom. Nevaeh was always really, really quiet. She enjoyed coming, but she definitely had sort of a quiet demeanor. She would come in and not want to be noticed, I think. Since Nevaeh has been going to the Boys and Girls Club, I feel like she's gotten a little bit more confidence. She has a little bit more height to her shoulders when she comes in, and I think her creativity has gotten a little bit braver since then. Me and her have created a bond where in the mornings, we speak to each other, we give each other a hug. Before she gets on the Boys and Girls Club bus, she sees me again, she says, see you tomorrow, Ms. Mobley. The club is considered a safe haven. Oftentimes, kids come in. When they first arrive, they're crying because they don't want to be here. By the end of the day, they're crying because they don't want to leave. Kids come in, they forget about their problems, their worries. They come in, they enjoy themselves, they have fun. I feel like in the school setting, the kids don't always have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with an adult, but I know at the Boys and Girls Club, they can have that opportunity, and they can have the chance to really bond with someone who cares about them, and it, and it shows. It really winds up showing in what they're bringing back to school. I would say it's fun. It helps you with a lot of stuff, like it teach you math and ELA, and it helps you a lot. But I believe that it, it will show some light and so she can see that there is another level. Not just, oh, I have to finish school, or I just have to go to the Boys and Girls Club, but it's more so, okay, she did it. I feel like I can do it. She looks like me. I know that I can, I can do it. So I know that there is something good coming out of what I'm doing now. Just the idea that there's someone within your space that has done that step, I believe it is a great thing to see. At this time now, we will have another club parent, Mrs. Tucker. And I'm also the mother of a loving son, 
Mr. Alonzo Tucker Jr., who's sitting back at the back table. Um, as a parent, I have been affiliated with the Boys and Girls Club for some years. It started back in 2017 with my daughter. Uh, she was a freshman and she was with the teen center. She's now a junior at Georgia Southern in Statesboro, Georgia. Um, oh God, it's been a lot of stuff. Um, after then, my son became a member here in 2022. Um, as a parent, it was dealing with the transition from, with him, transitioning into a different facility. At first, he was kind of shaky, but then he grew into what I consider a family because AJ, as everyone knows, is AJ. Um, we're also with him, it, with the Boys and Girls Club, they, to me, it's like a family structure. Um, I love that they have the qualities of teaching dignity and respect with the children. Um, I've learned being as a supervisor also that with, in this day and time, we have to look out for our kids. Our kids are our future. Here at the Boys and Girls Club, they make sure that our kids are our future. They go over and beyond for these kids. And that's one thing that I love that y'all do. Y'all really do. And um, it's just, it's when coming here to get my son and see the happiness he has and his numerous girlfriends, because <laughs> he loves his women, but, um, and it's just the happiness I see. And that's what a parent wants to see for their child. They want to see that and see that it's instilled in them, dealing with the education, making sure that they're getting what they need to move on, to better themselves. Because I see as a parent, it's a cruel world on the outside. This is, like someone said earlier, it's a safe haven. It is. It's protection. Our children need to be protected. Um, like I said, and I tell anybody in the community, if they need a place, a safe haven for their children, I recommend the Boys and Girls Club. Thank you. Thank you. Now, now so AJ, we had fried chicken for you tonight, okay? Because AJ loves his chicken. Thank you, Mrs. Tucker. Um, my son was going to um, the facility that she works at Head Start, and um, she said, who is this little girl AJ keeps talking about? And I said, what's her name? And she told me, and I said, oh, okay. I'm just going to have to watch him the next time. Again, I'll tell you that number is 229-234-6100. And the key to it is you take out your phone, you go to your text messages, you hit new message. So then in the number box, you put 229-234-6100 and you text give. Then they'll prompt you with a little saying and then you'll respond back. You should try it. Lastly, I'd like to welcome back to our stage, Mr. Lee Wagner. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, Ms. Tucker, and thank you, Ms. Butler, for uh, sharing with us. And please, please forgive me, I forgot to earlier um, recognize our elected officials. I'm so sorry for that. We have uh, with us um, Mayor Flowers. Well, with us, um, Councilwoman um, Wanda Warren. And you heard, you heard earlier from um, 
Thomasville City Schools uh, Board of Ed Education Chair, Keydar Butler. So, thank you. Again, we'd like to make sure that we recognize and thank our sponsors. Um, again, they are listed on the back page of, of your program. Please, let's give it up for our sponsors one more time. I'd like to uh, ask all of our parents in attendance to stand uh, to be recognized. We thank you for entrusting your kids to us. So parents, if you'll wave, stand something. I want to, want to thank our amazing staff. Give them a big hand. I'd like to also thank our board of directors. Let's uh, recognize them as well. And there's uh, two special volunteers that we'd like to thank that have been with us uh, for this uh, dinner for a number of years, Ms. Sue White and Ms. Eugenia Harris. If you would please wave. Thank you. I have a special recognition. Uh, it's a bittersweet recognition. I um, had an individual that's um, been near and dear to this organization to um, sit down with me last week and um, shared with me the, the great news that she's uh, recently retired and she's a 40 plus year employee at Flowers Foods and uh, Lenny, if you'll come up, Lenny Garcia Hill, let's uh, congratulate, her her, congratulate her on her recent retirement. That was the good news. The bad news is she also shared with me that uh, she's got a long buck bucket list as a new retiree and she's no longer going to be serving on the board of directors. So uh, we're happy for you, I think. <laughs> I think. But you know, Lenny and her 14 years of service to this organization as a board volunteer did a fantastic job. She is the epitome of what a board member should be. Uh, she was not shy about giving of her time, her talent, or her treasures, and so we will certainly miss you, and the door is always open should you get bored in retirement and, and decide to come back. But uh, she, has been, she has done a, may I borrow, phenomenal, may I borrow that from you? you okay. She, uh, she, she's done a great job, and I just cannot thank her enough for um, her being instrumental in um, this organization being, being what it is. So thank you, Lynn. We do have, uh, since you only told me this last Thursday, we do have a small token of our appreciation, but this is forthcoming. So I figure we'll, we'll, we'll use that to lure you back. Thank you. All right, you ready for some more good news? Are you ready for some more good news? I will, in my lovely attire. Guess what next year is? Anyone want to take a guess next year? Next year is our 25th anniversary, and here's our 25th anniversary logo. And we have some cards that we're going to pass out. I want everyone to take out your phone and go to your calendar, please. Take out your phone, go to your calendar. May the 14th, 2024. May 14th, 2024, we expect to see each of you back here to celebrate our 25th anniversary. It's not often we schedule things that far in advance. <laughs> but uh, no, we are, as I said earlier, it's been an amazing journey to be in this community and have a presence in this community for 24 years to impact the lives of kids. And again, that would not be possible without your generosity. And so we are very, very excited about next year and celebrating the 25th anniversary. So and seriously, we, we do hope that you will come and be a part of that wonderful celebration with us.